most really cool effects rely on the additive effect of having multiple layers of different things that complement each other and contribute to adding a level of complexity and dynamic that make it actually work. And that's very valid for particles. We do, and in this situation, we already have a um, nice blast. Doesn't mean it's the final shape of it, but I think it's in a good stage. And at this point, what we're gonna be doing is adding a different layer uh, to this. If you go to the camera two, where we see it from the back, one of the elements that I feel it's missing and it should add to the intensity of the impact and the energy level and also for the graphics of the whole shape is if we could have some sort of effect of radial blast that's going on these directions kind of throughout the animation having these layers kind of being pushed through through kind of gradually not all at the same time but kind of feeling like we have some sort of waves uh, on that blast small bursts that kind of create this type of shape so that's what we're going to be aiming for and it's a good opportunity for us to try out um, simulating particle effects using flip fluids so we're going to be relying on a lot of what we've already done gonna grab the sphere the difference between this one and one that we already have uh, let's see so let's go here or better yet I want to have a look at the edit on the final position so we have the sphere that we're going to be using and we're going to be applying a transform which is going to be for us to animate the scale. And we're also going to be reusing the transform node that actually adjusts, adjusts the position. Okay, so that's what we have. We don't want the clip, this is going to be a volume that's going to be emitting particles, but we do want to animate the scale. The, um, in terms of positioning, if we, I wanted to match more or less what we already have here. So let me kind of, when we have the, the actual effect coming in, okay, you can see the particles there. And that's the size that I'm, Going to go for and that should be something like more of this size 0 0.7 0 0.75 something like that so that's the goal but as i was saying it will it's it it'll be more interesting if we have bursts layers of that radial motion uh, being added uh, to the current effect that we already have on the blast so the way I'm going to be animating that, it's it's not by hand. Instead, I'm going to be using this value, but the main element of the equation that I'm going to be using is the sine function. And I'm going to be using the sine function of time. Time goes on very slowly. Um, in if you, if you just do this, then it's going to be a very slow motion. Uh, so I'm going to be accelerating this by 100 to start. And these values will range between minus 1 and 1. I want to make sure we clamp those between 0 and 1. I don't want negative values. And then this is what we're going to be multiplying by the final value that we actually want. So let me see what's going on here. So we have the sine function that needs under parentheses and that should be fine so now when we have a look at the at this we should have a scale value and as you can see we need to accelerate it a bit more 
so let's have like 800 okay that's what we're going to be using i'm not gonna we don't need to see this anymore so we will have an object that has this motion it may seem really fast but it's a, a rhythm that works i've tried it out before the um, you can slow it down for sure so you can just come here instead of 800 you can kind of put it to 600 that will give you less bursts and bigger portions of particles being emitted but i'm gonna go with 800 for now and this will be our particle source our fluid source so we'll create a clip top source and this will rely on voxel size and particle separation so we can connect these two so i'm going to copy parameter paste route with reference and for the voxel size i'm going to start with 0 0.01 we should see something happening if you press w on the viewport you should see the particles inside i also want to make sure that the jitter seed is connected to time that's also an option so that it, it they're always changing the particles kind of being jittered around after that i think we have pretty much everything we need for the sake of um, of emission 